This is the Out of Time Film Podcast, where your hosts, Tom and John, discuss everything from blockbuster films to TV and games like there's no tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the Out of Time Film Podcast. I'm Tom. I'm John. And this week we're talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. And John, you are joining me all the way from Croatia. Yes, everybody. I have an echo chamber. I'm stuck in the hyperbolic <laughs> time chamber right now. So bear with me with this audio. So I'm hoping it will sound good on that side. But yeah, Deadpool and Wolverine. It has been a while since we've seen Deadpool six years. And yeah. it just feels so weird to go back into that phase of Deadpool because it just feels like we finished it with that closure with some kind. But no, we did get hints about like, hey, we're going to get Deadpool somehow in the MCU. And it's a really long story how they got this all together. Yeah, it feels so weird because we closed the X-Men timeline with Deadpool 2, with Logan, with Dark Phoenix and it really felt final for better or for worst and so now to be like we're back and not only that but we're folding it all into the MCU and non-spoilers first but in many ways this is like the swan song to the Fox superheroes Logan is the true culmination of the arc Deadpool Wolverine is the swan song it's the victory lap it's Mm. bringing back a load of different stuff from throughout the time it's kind of saying hey wasn't this great even though we've already had the emotional climax and I do understand that way of thinking a lot yeah I could definitely see this is a love letter to the Fox era with X-Men 1, 2 and 3 and then Days of Future Past First Class but then you know with Deadpool it was a really kind of a struggle for Marvel because you got three different Marvel sections one at Fox one for the MCU and one for the spun for Spider-Man, yes. Spider-Man universe as well. So yeah. it's interesting when we grew up, we were just thinking about like, hey, you know, it'd be really interesting how Wolverine or Deadpool would be in the MCU. But this film is reflecting on that era of the good and the bad and the ugly of Fox Marvel. And I was just really hesitant about this movie. How are they going to tackle Disney trying to overcome Deadpool's humor with the violence or with the jokes? And I got gotta say they pretty nailed that freedom of what Deadpool is like in this film. It has some brilliant moments in this. I thought there's some really compelling, emotional, funny moments in the story that I thought, hey, that's a really interesting path to go down there. But I just felt like, why do we need this movie? Because this is just that closure for the characters. It just felt kind of wholesome, but also just like, uh, this is just kind of annoying. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think this film, what was the point? Did this justify anything? I don't think so. I don't think this film had much to say as an individual piece of art. Much like a lot of big MCU films, much like No Way Home, much like Endgame, as an experience, this was near flawless. So much of this film, I was sitting there just going, yes. And that's great. And in many ways, this film shouldn't have ended because the moment it ends or the moment that a scene passes, you begin to think and you go, wait, hold on a minute. What are we saying here? What is the point? of any of this and even Mm. during the film the cracks began to form obviously there are cameos in this film and sometimes see a cameo and i'd go cool and then it would continue and i'd go is is it is it is it really you know Yeah, like, you know, we've done videos on Deadpool 1 and 2. I like the first. I love the second. This franchise had a good thing going for it. It flirted with other continuities and cameos. You know, ton of fun and really stylish, especially in the second one. And I feel like this third one, they were trying to make me dislike it. You know, they dropped some of my favorite characters from the previous film. No Cable, no Domino. Hired the guy who made Free Guy, which is one of my least favorite films, Train 21. You know, the rumors and the leaks, it made it sound like it was just going to be a cameo-infested fangasm. And it would lose that emotional core and the heart that's first two films. And on top of all that, they're bringing back Hugh Jackman's Wolverine after the beautiful goodbye to his time in the role with Logan. The film just felt made to piss me off. And you know what? I just thought it was just kind of fine. I didn't have massive feelings about it. I wasn't overly positive, overly negative, but I think that's almost a problem. I feel like this film should have really, as you said, justified itself. I should have said, yes, this was worth bringing Hugh Jackman's Wolverine back. 
And I kind of yeah. don't know if it was. Yeah, it's just like, when you look back at the first two, Deadpool 2 was hitting the nail of like what Deadpool is supposed to be like as a character. There's that emotional side of the story, which I absolutely love. And it's just like how Deadpool goes through the struggles of losing Vanessa in that story. That opening was just so cold. It's just done brilliantly well. And in this one, it just felt like there wasn't a flair in this movie. It just felt like we're just watching a copy and paste of something that's trying to replicate Deadpool 2 in the worst way possible in my opinion it's just like why does the movie need to lean on the cameo fest and it's just like linger on that as well and the problem with this movie is it was trying to get the audience's attention of like okay what's going to surprise us what's going to surprise us you know with the TVA or you know the characters that come out nowhere so that was in my brain all the way like okay is there something going to break our expectations but no, it just lent on that idea of like characters, this possibility, what they could have done. And that really annoyed me. There's some brilliant stuff that they had, some really interesting dynamic between Wolverine and Deadpool. And I mean, I wish this as well to have this Deadpool and Wolverine interaction for such a long time. And I wish the movie was trying to do something on its own, but I, I think it just felt complex at the beginning. It just felt very messy. Yeah, there's this idea of failure and the chance to be a hero and taking that chance. And there's some really interesting moments in the film exploring failure from Deadpool, from Wolverine. There's a particular group of cameos that also explore that idea of the missed opportunity to be a hero. And I thought that was really compelling. I thought that that was something that the film sometimes really went with. What I wasn't expecting was we get Wolverine in the yellow suit, but they gave that yellow suit meaning. They gave that yellow suit part of his character arc and the position of this Wolverine that we meet. That's all really interesting stuff. But I feel like so much of it slipped away in favor of stuff that felt like it wanted to get fans excited. And I feel like that's never the way. You shouldn't be making a film thinking, what's going to make the fans excited? You should be thinking about what's best for the story. What do you as a creative want to see? And I do feel like they were kind of maybe thinking a little bit too much about getting people happy. There's a lot of actually really good... This might have been the funniest Deadpool film yet. There's some really good jokes about the MCU being shit after Endgame, about the quality declining. I thought that was really good. You can tell that they have this entire untouched pool of jokes and they really <coughs> mind it well. Who knows in the future those jokes might not age as well, much like Deadpool 1. But I did think those jokes were fantastic. But the whole thing just had me exhausted. There's a lot of stuff that made me excited and happy. And, you know, the overload of nerdy stuff was, you know, it was exhausting in its own right. But mostly my feeling is just I can't handle how this whole MCU, this whole universe is slipping into mediocrity. And it's only cries of quality are being snuffed out by audiences who don't care and artists who are moving on to bigger and better things and I'm just sick of films that look like they were shot entirely on a soundstage with hollow characters spouting nothing but various one-liners and emotions that barely last two scenes that's somewhat of an exaggeration but god did I think the film was just fine and did not justify bringing back Jackman's Wolverine as much as there were great moments, I feel that like those moments were completely lost in a muddle of everything else. Yeah, I completely agree with that, because this film is really meta, because it's talking about Fox. <laughs> oh my god, I need to get some water, give me a second. Okay. I'm struggling over here. <laughs> Croatia's gonna kill you, John. Oh my god, right. So this film is trying to incorporate that idea of, you know, the relationship between Marvel and Fox, the idea of they've been trying to do this for years. So they lent on that idea. It's just like, I wish they could have done something else to really focus on the emotional side of Deadpool because there's a really interesting concept for Deadpool because he wants to be Avenger and that's really interesting that I think that is a really good continuation from the second film because he is learning how to be a hero he wants to prove himself that he can be better and I wish they focused on that side as well it's just like okay that is a really interesting side to Deadpool because again I keep mentioning this all the time it's a really interesting concept of like how does Deadpool deal with immortality and how he uses jokes to really hide his emotional feelings and there's an amazing scene. I think it just works really well to see that dynamic between Wolverine and Deadpool. So I talked about that in the spoilers. Well, let's get yeah, into spoilers. It, Tell yes. me about that scene. Deadpool uh, and Wolverine get in the car and they're just driving and then they talk about what they're going to do if they save Wolverine's universe. And Wolverine is like, 
What do you mean if? And Wolverine goes really, really hard on Deadpool, breaking down his character, breaking down who he is, and it's just like being with this pathetic guy. And I was like, whoa, that was such an interesting scene. Why can't we see more of that dynamic between Wolverine who sees Deadpool as this character? Because you don't see that as a lot in the movies. Like, I mean, with Cable, Cable's dynamic was great about like how Deadpool's so annoying. How does he deal with that? But Wolverine, he's just like really pissed. And Deadpool is just really heartbroken about what Wolverine has to say because it's like that hard hidden reality that Deadpool has to go through like he's going to lose this relationship with Vanessa but also that's just a repeating storyline as well he keeps losing Vanessa but brings way back to find her I don't know if you're familiar with the amazing Spider-Man run of comics by Zeb Wells where Peter loses MJ to another guy and Zeb Wells was a writer on this film this film had like six writers and I know that the writer's strike was impactful but it really felt like a tug of war between all these ideas. One thing that I really praised in Deadpool 2 was Cable was his role as an antagonist and in this one we have such a really great opportunity. Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova. What potential we have there. She's the twin of Charles Xavier mm. she's been cast away. We have this great actor playing her and she was so disappointing. Like yep yeah, she's intimidating, she's got some good lines but ultimately she just boils down to a plot device for Logan and Wade to stop there's no real tangible motivation to grab onto she does have a motivation it's she feels displaced or something but we barely go into that in the final scene where she meets her demise she's just standing there just doing this she's like oh that's it like she doesn't like what are her emotions in that scene what's truly going she is nothing more than just a mustache twirling it felt like we'd moved backwards like back to what we had with Ajax in the first film you, you compare that to Cable or Russell or Juggernaut or the evil headmaster any of the antagonistic forces from Deadpool 2 she doesn't nearly have the same presence or emotional depth behind her and that's like what yeah. a shame I feel like Marvel we should have really moved past this like paradox as well it's just another disappointing villain we should be moving beyond yeah. boring MCU antagonists but here we are with characters like Cassandra Paradox, Darben in the Marvels, Gravik in Secret Invasion, whoever the hell were the villains in Miss Marvel. If only they could all be like the high evolutionary. I don't even know, but it, it's a real shame. It is a real shame. It's just like, why would you use a one-off villain for this story? Because I think you could potentially figure out a way to use a villain from the Fox era. Because again, this is a film about the era of the Marvel Fox movies. Yeah. And Cassandra and Paradox was just so weak in the movie. It just felt like they were just so one dimensional. They didn't have like a proper motivation. Like Cassandra's concept is so so, so interesting. But at the end of the day, it's the story. There's some really interesting bits in the story, but overall, it just feels like it's just so messy and you're trying to grasp these concepts one at a time and it just feels like, whoa, okay, we just went some really interesting stuff, but then we just decided to go by and go with the cameos. But to go with Paradox, this was such a confusing moment for me. Deadpool is like recruited by the TVA. It's like, we want you, Deadpool. It's like, oh, cool. Can I join the whole secret timeline business? Like, yeah sure sure and then paradox is like oh no sorry your timeline is actually gonna deplete i actually have to delete it so yeah by the way logan's dead and it's just like there's so much information and so much exposition in my mind yes. i was like whoa 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 we could have just explored deadpool's time traveling business in deadpool 2 that is a really interesting concept of like deadpool really wants to change something from the past but he has to maybe accept it, you know, has to learn from things, you know, for the TVA. And then that could have potentially meet Wolverine for the story. This is my version of the story, like how Deadpool's actions have consequences. And in this movie, characters don't really understand the consequences as much. I mean, Wolverine, he just lets Cassandra go because he's like, oh, she took away my voices. Just like that, you know, that really helped me. And it's just like, okay, that quick. There wasn't really much time to emphasize a lot of things. Like Deadpool's arc in this movie, there's a really, really good arc for him to be like, I want to be an Avenger, you know, this kind of hero and get Vanessa back. Again, this repeating story. That could have been really interesting, you know, to learn as a hero, like how can you move from there to go into Secret Wars or some other, or other movies as a character. But no, you don't really get to see that emphasized throughout the movie with Logan as well. So yeah, and then Logan's arc, nothing was really emphasized besides me it just felt there was so much going on with the cameos so much going on with the concept and i really didn't like how the tva was underused in the story it just felt like oh they were just at the back of your mind 
because Deadpool broke so much rules of TVA as well, and they had to go back to the void with this. So I just don't know why this movie had to had so much in and just could have focused on the really good aspects of the movie and just like, no, okay, we're going with the cameos. Again, it's that push and pull between all the different writers and all the different things they wanted to do with this film. And there are moments when those emotions really come through. There's a scene by the campfire where Logan talks about what he went through, how he lost his version of the X-Men. And I thought that was beautiful. And the idea that that his arc is that now that he messed up so badly, he wants that chance to prove himself. That's why he wears the suit. That was brilliant. The moment where he gets out of the car and he stands with Deadpool and Laura and Gambit and Elektra and Blade, that was really good. I thought that those actually, like, you know, cameos sometimes they work sometimes they don't the whole johnny storm thing that wasn't really for me it was a fun kind of we think it's cats america but it's not but to me i just watched it and i was like oh chris but i can't lie seeing blade and seeing electra and especially especially seeing channing tatum as gambit finally after all this time i cannot knock that brilliant his accent was perfect his suit was, I mean, maybe the suit was a little bit too CGI. I hope he actually got to wear the suit, but the suit was amazing. Yeah. All of the scenes with those guys were just great. But like, we don't really get enough time. It's like they're here. They say the one-liners, action scene, and that's yeah. it. Like, we do get a good emotional scene with Laura where she talks to Logan, but it's like, we don't really get to get to the core of what it means for them yeah. to be lost heroes, heroes who never got their chance. That's a really interesting thing to do. And we do get mm. moments of that, but like, yeah. moments aren't enough in a film where so much is going on we need more than just like yeah i wish i could be a hero anyway on to the next scene it's like whoa why is this film two hours let's slow down deadpool makes a joke about audiences being okay with long run times make it two hours 45 minutes then really go for it this year we've seen june part two which is one of the highest grossing films of the year and that was on that was maybe was that three hours i think it was make this film longer and really dig into those things that's a great sequence where we get to see different wolverines right we see like a, a comic book accurate height wolverine we see henry cavill as wolverine which is a bit weird but fine we saw wolverine in the John Byrne suit, the brown and yellow, which is the best Wolverine suit. And oh, yeah, I was eating that up. And that scene was very fast. It is a montage and that's fine. Those scenes are fine. When it's a montage, you can afford to just kind of skip through the cameos. But yeah. when you're introducing these characters and you're trying to further the themes, don't just have them in for two seconds. Don't have Blade in just so he can say some motherfucker's still trying to ice skate uphill and then he leaves. That's basically all he did, right? They walk yeah. in in slow motion to music and then like they get like their cool moments and then that's it. Yeah. We need more. That's not good justification. Yeah. And the idea about this movie is about having closures on these characters. It works on paper about like, okay, we didn't get to see Blade, you know, as a closure or Electra as a closure or, I mean, we did get to see Laura and Logan in some way, you know, with their ending of that. And the idea of Gambit's pretty cool as well. So not gonna lie, it was really cool to see Blade, Electra, and Gambit. It's just like, whoa, okay. They got Wesley Snipes back as Blade, which is How? like insane. How did they do that? I have no idea. Also the bit where he says, I'll always be the only Blade and Deadpool looks at the camera very funny really great stuff yeah that's just excellent but why do you need to expand so much on that it's just again cameos are cameos it should be a couple of seconds it should be funny it's like hey like stan lee it's a stan lee thing you know you sure. should continue yeah. on that with their cameos but the movie just needed to like lean on that expectation and they could have just went on with the illuminati thing like maybe show characters where they are in the story and have some closure to it but the characters did absolutely nothing they just fought and that's it and it's yeah. just like okay well, where was that closure for that where, where were these closure for these characters in the MCU era, really. Yeah, if you want to give these characters a thematic role, a role in the narrative, they become something more than cameos. They become supporting roles. And therefore, you can't just do nothing with them like that. But I do think it was really cool to see them all in action. I think the action scenes in this were pretty good. I think the film was directed fairly well. I thought the opening sequence with Deadpool and Wolverine's corpse dancing to Bye Bye Bye, 
that was pretty great. I was I was, was loving it. I, I was I like, that. okay, this film's gonna be great. And then it wasn't, but like it was. I think as a fan, my 12-year-old self really enjoyed this film. And there's a yeah. lot that I can kind of give it slack for. If we talk about this film in like two years, I'm sure I will be so much more negative, which is funny because I am being fairly negative. There are good things. I thought the action was pretty cool. The scene where Wolverine put his mask on in the cinema, I took my partner's hand and I squeezed it so tightly. I was like, yes, like just having him have that cowl on and that whole scene with Madonna, like a prayer playing. Yeah. was just pitch perfect. Was the mask CGI? Unfortunately so. The white eyes were horrible, you know, emotionless. It really reaffirmed to me why Batman should never have white eyes in live action. We need to be able to see the eyes, we need to be able to see the emotion. That didn't work. But other than that, I thought the, the cowl was really great. But kind of like yeah. thinking about the cowl being CGI, a big problem about this film for me was everything looked so smooth and it all looked too perfect in some strange way. It all looked like everything was shot separately and superimposed together with kind of wonky CGI. You get that a little bit in the other two mm. films as well. But this just kind of looked like it was filmed in a cupboard. <laughs> you know, like much like kind of like No Way Home. Like I thought Loki... <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Whoa, Tom. That is a crazy, crazy... Okay, yeah, go with that. Go, yeah, go on. like, is... I thought Loki looked infinitely better than this, yeah, and that's a TV true, show, true, right? True. Like, compared yeah. to a big blockbuster, like, you know the scene where they're fighting in front of the crashed 20th Century Fox logo? Yeah. That was practical, but it didn't look practical yes. at all. It looked like it was done on a soundstage, like it was done with green screen. And that's really disappointing. What, yeah. like, what are we doing here? Why are we filming all this stuff practically if it looks like that? It's a real shame that this film had some really good ideas in theory and some really great moments in execution, but the whole thing had to kind of look just visually dull. Yeah, I mean, I loved the scene where Deadpool gets to fight the other versions of Deadpool. I thought that was a really yeah. cool, cool idea because that, as a comic book reader, you know, you get to see that in the stories of like Deadpool trying to be Deadpool in different multiple universes. And I think that's a great concept as well. That fight was so cool to have Madonna as well. And again, it's just really cool. But then what they're trying to achieve here with the, it's just a multiversal thing that just like beating a dead horse at this point, you know, with the yeah. multiversal concept. It's just like, yeah. okay, we we get it. We get this idea. Again, it's with the cameos. It's the idea of, okay, we're going to have these characters back somehow. I mean, it was pretty cool to see them, but it's just like, why do we need them to have part of the story? But yeah, I wish there was just, with the multiple Deadpools, I was like, that's great for this trilogy. Yeah, that was really yeah. interesting. But like, how do they fit into the themes? Like, you know, think about Spider-Verse. Yes. You see all these different spider people. They all have something to say about the nature of being Spider-Man. What about the nature of being Deadpool? Is the nature that all of them love Peter? I mean, we all love Peter, but like, it's a very strange thing. And there's a genuinely hilarious moment when Deadpool says, no more multiverses. We got to stop doing the multiverse. And I thought that was really funny. But yes. you, you think about it, like they're still doing it. I mean, obviously we're filming this before the Marvel Studios Hall H Comic Con. So we don't really know what's happening there. But they say no more multiverses, but they're still going to make Secret Wars. They're still like, they're not going to commit to that. And they should like, it feels like they know that this is a terrible idea. And yet they're still going to do it because they want to make $3 billion at the box office it's just tiring and exhausting and genuinely i feel like this could be the final marvel film and i wouldn't care I feel like there's no massive lingering questions. There wasn't even before this film, but like this kind of was a swan song to all of it in many ways. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, let's just, let's, let's just leave it. I'm tired, John. I'm yeah. tired. The really good points about the movie is the comedy. I thought the comedy was great. You know, trash talking about Marvel. about Absolutely. You know, but it's just a story that really just hits me. It's just like, okay, why did the movie have to have so many concepts, but also they didn't really execute well and the villains it's just like for this movie i just couldn't really see a clear message for that because deadpool must be hero it's just like okay that was great in the beginning it's lost in the middle of the story you don't know where it is and then the movie is just like hey i'm back with vanessa and but you know wolverine's great you know talking to laura i mean that was really wholesome to see that yeah but that was wholesome but what, what was the point we had a perfect ending yeah, for wolverine was the point? where was the themes where was the yeah. thematic thing for this yeah for the story it's just 
just like, like, like where is it? The idea is like all heroes need to have their chance to be the heroes. Not everyone's going to be a failure. But it feels like a fundamental misunderstanding of Logan's ending. Not only was it a brilliant send off to Hugh Jackman in this role, but also just because the ending isn't happy doesn't make it a bad ending. Doesn't mean that it isn't the perfect ending we could ever ask for. Yeah, there wasn't even real conflict. There wasn't any tension about the multiversal threat, about like reality is going to collapse because of the sky. This one dimensional villain, and it's just like, okay, there is a machine, it can do everything, blah, 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 blah. And again, Loki season two successfully worked around with the tension of like, how is Loki going to save the multiverse? And Loki season two had no villain. The antagonist was time. Obviously, there were small antagonists, but largely the antagonist was time running out and time unraveling. And that was so much more interesting. Yeah, this movie should have just focused on the consequences of using time travel from Deadpool 2, because it's like the TVA might look into Deadpool. With the time travel, it just gets a bit complicated. I wish there was just an easy way without getting so much exposition at the beginning of the story. So overall, yeah, overall this movie just felt really messy, but funny. There's one movement I absolutely love as well, is when Deadpool and Wolverine are trying to destroy the machine, and they hold hands together, and <laughs> you get to see Wolverine as both. And it's just like, okay, yes. this is a pretty good moment. There are some fantastic individual moments. I think all around there are some brilliant music choices. This is, might be the best Deadpool soundtrack we've had. There are some, some really yeah. nice sequences and some moments that made me as a fan really happy. Gambit again, Channing Tatum, we were robbed. We were robbed of you as Gambit for a whole movie. It was great to see some of those stuff. You know, I have friends who love this film. I have friends who this is just ignited a fire back inside of them that has made them excited about comic book films. And that's great. This film is guaranteed to do great at the box office. It might be the kick that Marvel needs to propel themselves into Captain America, Fantastic Four, Thunderbolts, the films next year. We'll see what gets announced at Comic-Con. This film, I had a really good time watching it, but I don't think it was that great to be honest i don't think it was for me deadpool 2 will always be the goat deadpool film at the end of the day it's just like theme park like what scorsese said that is completely true he's got a point at the end of the day this is just entertainment so we have to consider that and this is a comic book movie as well so for a comic book fan this is pretty cool yeah I see a lot of tweets. They look at all the most recent MCU projects and it will be, the MCU is over, the MCU is back, the MCU is over, the MCU is back, you know. People constantly acting like every film is going to, or every show is going to make or break the universe. That's not what's going on. Sometimes the MCU is great, sometimes the MCU sucks. It's always been like that. I thought this film was fine. I want it to all be like Loki. I want it to all be like Guardians 3. I want it all to be like Eternals. It won't be because those aren't the films people care about. But let's not act that because one film or one show you didn't like it's over yes secret invasion sucked but guardians 3 was just like one thing before that like calm down i don't think this film is the mcu being back i don't think this film is the mcu being over the mcu is the mcu it will just continue on until hugh jackman is 90 as the film says itself so we'll see what are you going to give deadpool wolverine out of 10 this is really hard because I think this is better than Deadpool 1 because yeah. Deadpool 1 has really some messy structures. It didn't have that. But this one, I thought the comedy was just excellent. It made it a lot of fun. This is a movie just to turn your brain off and like, hey, this is just some fun. So I'm going to give this a 7. Nice. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it is better than Deadpool 1. Not as good as 2. It kind of suffers from that superhero trilogy thing where the final film in the trilogy kind of expands a bit too wide. It doesn't feel like that much of a continuation. Of, of two but you know as a film I had fun with it I'm going to give it a six thank you everybody for listening if you're listening on YouTube and you liked it you can like and subscribe if you want to see more and if you're listening on Spotify or Apple you can follow and give us a five star review if you think we're worthy and next week we are going to the opposite end of the comic book spectrum we're going to be doing Batman Caped Crusader which I'm really interested about <laughs> yeah uh, I'm yeah. so looking forward to that. John just put his arms up like it's the the second coming of Matt Reeves. We're so back. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. my throat is That's going like, to be brilliant. So destroyed um, right now. And you can send us an email at alstonefilmpod at gmail.com. We'll be recording next Saturday, so let us know your thoughts on Batman Cape Crusader by them, and we'll answer it right here on the podcast next week.
Yes, and you can follow us on Instagram at Out of Time Film Pod to see our incredible thumbnails from Zane Aspel on Twitter for more thoughts from Tom and me and TikTok to see as the clips we should all also on Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts. Thank you for listening. Thanks to L James Mayer for the excellent theme. Thanks to William Phillips for focus as always. And I think that's everything. And my throat is about to be destroyed. <laughs> and oh my god, it's what I need. Take what you're given. Give nothing back. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.